everybody. Welcome to another Friday night episode of Keto Rocks Radio. I'm your host, Jim Hobbs, and somewhere on the screen is my carnivore co-host, Brian Damage Forsyth of Kicks. And tonight, we got a special guest, one of Brian's bandmates. Uh, some call him the, the greatest or one of the greatest rock and roll front men uh, for the best live band in the world. And uh, I would tend to agree with that. So welcome, Steve Whiteman, to the show. Thank you. I'm humbled by that, but thank you. Well, it's uh, it's uh, it's true. A lot of people have the same feelings that I have, and and I think it's uh, deserved. And uh, and by the way, before we we get into the interview and let you talk about your new release, I just wanted to give you kudos, Steve, for uh, for what you said last night to the uh, to the crowd at York uh, Fair in regards to it doesn't matter where we play at this is entertainment are you guys entertained and that was yeah. just a beautiful way it was it was so filled of humility and humbleness uh i i hope people understand just how rare that is to be seen that uh at the stage that you guys are on yeah that was that was from the heart i mean i i was i rarely look at facebook but when i do i see stuff like that and, and it and it sticks with me and i'm like you know what people it doesn't matter who's first second or third it's about it's entertainment and the, the everybody's out there to do the best job they possibly can we don't care if we're first or last in fact we <laughs> like being first because we like getting the hell out of there right <laughs> actually it's funny you say that i told my wife that and she's like oh that's the show we go to see i'd rather go see the early show than get out of there exactly because we're mean, asleep you, at midnight yeah if you don't want to see the other two bands and you're out of there but if you want to enjoy all three bands and yeah, go for it no no i i totally agree with you now, last night, it had to be scorching hot. So how did you guys bear with that hot and humidity? At least it was here in Virginia. I'm sure the same thing in Pennsylvania. Yeah, it was. It was, it was but unfortunately, it was only a 45-minute set, so it wasn't that hard. I mean, I had to peel off a couple of layers of clothing, but af after that, it was, it was fine. What and about we, you, Brian? Well, we did that show in, what was it, Houston? Yeah. Uh, a couple months ago. That was probably, after that, nothing... <laughs> nothing really compares to it i mean yeah. it was hot, but it wasn't unbearable like that other show yeah jimmy hey, almost died <laughs> well no brian told us that story he thought he said he was really concerned about him he, we you all guys, yeah he, he was purple i went back to look at him and his face was purple and i just looked at him and i said yeah, let's take a little break here and i i did a little stand-up routine for about five or ten minutes just to give him a break yeah, it's Brian. Brian said that. When's when's that uh, comic uh, CD coming out? <laughs> <laughs> it only comes out when I need to do it. It's not anything <laughs> I really like to do, but when I when it's needed, I I I dig down and find it. Well, Steve, let's talk about your your new uh, release, and I got it right here. It, it'll show up. Maybe it won't. Nope. Pull back a little bit. It's white. There you go. It's white. It looks like a beautiful <laughs> album. Yeah. So. Uh, congratulations on this project and seeing it come to fruition and, and have it released and well received and uh, i I, tr I truly i truly love it actually um out of all those uh tunes that you have on there which one is your favorite i think do me like you done me before that that one just kind of just it just rocks all the way through and it, you know it's about a relationship where uh, you start off like rabbits and then, uh, then you have kids and it kind of goes away and the kids <laughs> grow up and you want to go back to being rabbits. So that's, that's the whole theme of it. That's, that's awesome. Which one has the most meaning for you? I know, uh, actually one of my favorite songs is your kid dynamite. I actually yeah, just like that I, song. I was going to say, yeah, because when I started writing that song, Ronnie was actually coming over here uh, with me and helped me with the demos, putting some solos down and making suggestions and, and we were coming up, trying to come up with lyrics for that song. And I actually was able to write them after he, after he left because his, his real demise happened after, you know, we stopped playing for COVID and everything. And that, that's when the fruition of what he was going through actually hit me. So it was pretty easy to write about it. I know you love Ronnie. I know, and, but what I liked about that song, it's so cuts through the bs and goes straight to the heart of what happens when you're not able to step up and, and battle that beast what the reality of it is i mean you don't sugarcoat it and that's what i liked about it well nice yeah i i, I wasn't trying to sugarcoat it I, it's it's a real problem and he's been dealing with it for a long time and 
I've been telling everybody on stage, you know, why he's not on stage with us. And everybody is like applauding the fact that, that we want him to get better. We want him to get better mentally and physically. And they're applauding the fact that we brought somebody in to fill the music void that Ronnie left us with. And everybody's really accepting Bob Perry to coming in and, and, eh, you know, as much as we love and miss Ronnie, we're, 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 we're still very happy with the way things are going right now. Good, good. Have you talked, have you spoken with Ronnie, either one of you spoken to Ronnie lately to see how he's doing? Ronnie speaks to him more than I do. Yeah, I had been sp speaking to him uh, like every other week or so, but I actually haven't spoken to him since, since the beginning of July. So it's been a it, little bit. It's hard because there, ha there has to be a special window to, that you can call in there and there has to be a sponsor sitting there with them. So it, it's not just, a, you know, let's give Ronnie a call. It's not that easy. Right, right. It's, it's yeah. a little complicated. Gotcha. Yeah, which is for his own good, and we understand that. So, so back to your CD, Steve. How long has that CD, that music, been in you that you finally decided, you know what, COVID's hit, uh, I'm at home, I'm, I, let me go ahead and get this music out of me. How long has that music been in you? I probably started writing that stuff about four years ago. And, I, you know, I was writing, thinking uh, I, when it's done, and if Kix is ever ready to do another record that I would just throw it in the pile and whatever gets picked up, great. Whatever doesn't, I'll do with something down the road. And there's no talk of a new Kix record right now, especially COVID. And Mark's always coming up with these great plans of re-releasing <laughs> and remastering and you know the, the relit and, and the Fuse 30 and all that. So we've had these other campaigns going on. And I, and I shared the music with all the guys, but I really didn't get a very positive response from anybody. So when the opportunity came to get with Brad and Jimmy and Bob Perry to actually make, make this a, a solo record, you know, I, I kind of jumped at it and we had a great time doing it. And those guys took it up to another level from what those guys heard on the demo and what it actually turned out to be was, was way better. I mean, Jimmy's great drummer and Bob Perry really come in with all these ideas about, well, this song needs this guitar and this amp and, having Brad Divens play rhythm guitar and, and bass on everything. And it was, it was, it was just so much fun and it was so easy to do. It wasn't like we labored at anything. It was like, well, let's do this. Okay. That sounds great. That's awesome. That's gotta be a lot easier than back in the days when you're recording albums and you got everybody barking orders of what to do and the pressure yeah. that you're under. Yeah. And it was, it was, you know, the totally different way of recording because when COVID hit and it started to get bad, we had to separate. So Jimmy started doing all of his drums from his house and sending the files to Brad. I did all the vocals from my house and, and, and took my hard drive up to Brad. Bob and, and Brad probably spent the most time together because Bob said, I need to be there. I, I need, I, it's gotta be live feel. And he's the, the biggest reason that it sounds so big and, and live and real. Well, it's nice you got that type of talent as friends yeah. uh, surrounding you. Yeah. And also I had Dean Kramer come in for a day, who's an old buddy of mine from Funny Money. It was like four songs that needed some solos put on them. Brian wasn't around and Ronnie wasn't around. So I had to get somebody in. And so Dean, Dean was a, a, a perfect uh, replacement to come in and help me out. That's awesome. That's awesome. Now, do you have any, uh, any plans in the future of maybe doing a duet or an album collaborated with your daughter? No, I, my daughter is as talented as she is and as brilliant as she could be. She has no interest in being on stage and it, it baffles me, but you know, I have to respect her for, for what she feels and, and she's a, she's teaching right now and she loves that. I don't know if it's, if it's anxiety of getting on stage or what it, what it would take to maintain a career like that. Cause you know, I being in an, I, I warned her of how, how hard it is to do, what we've been doing for the past 40 years. And um, I don't think she has much, much interest in it, but she's, she's still young. That could change. I would love to see her get a, in a situation where she could shine and, and not have all the pressure on her, but she's a great singer. She's a, she's a brilliant pianist. She plays guitar, but it, it, I don't know. And all I can say is, I don't know. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. You know, talking about, you know, what you're saying about your daughter, which one of your parents do you draw strength from? Do you, you think you, you took over their personality or did they encourage you, inspire you uh, when you were younger to, to follow your music uh, ambitions? 
Um, neither one of them really. My mother supported me. I mean, she would always try to help me out when I needed to buy a, a, a piece of drum equipment or a stereo equipment, but we didn't have a whole lot of money. So that was few and far between. Um, I don't know. I just got the bug when I was, when I saw the Beatles on Yet Sullivan show, I got the bug and, and I never lost it. And, and I still have it. So I just, I, I persevered and I, I started playing at, at, at moose bars and legion bars when I was like eight, nine years old playing drums. And my dad would take a collection and we'd fill up a hat full of money and I'd make like 20 bucks. And I was like on top of the world. And I would take that money and put it towards my drums. And so I just always had that, that drive. And that's, that's why I'm still doing it. I was going to ask you, it was one of my questions I had for you. Do you still have the same passion? Is it still just as meaningful to you back in the days when you guys were the shoes and 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 playing you know dives do you still have that same excitement when you jump up on stage now i was going to say it's right before i go on stage it's when i that, that passion comes back but all the travel and all the bullshit that you have to deal with, <laughs> i don't care for that at all but but it's all worthwhile when you get up on stage and you have a killer crowd and 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 you murder that's that's when you go okay this is why i still do it yeah, talking about your old days traveling, because I know you guys were just road warriors. Like every day you were just going someplace, every night you were playing someplace new. What's What are some of your favorite memories that, uh, you know, back when you're like collecting pennies from everybody to make a phone call or quarters and, and a gas station? you guys have any favorite memories? Brian, you too, chime in on this one. Ahead, Do you guys Brian. have any favorite memories from uh, your early days of just touring in, in Ronnie's van? Oh. Uh. God, there's so many. I've been asked <laughs> questions so many times, and yeah. my there's so many. My mind pretty much goes blank on it. But uh, well, I mean, there's the ones I've talked about in interviews before. Just not not my favorite memories, but <laughs> the ones that, that I remember. Well, how about the entertaining memories? How about that? <laughs> well, there is all really the the ones that stick in my mind were usually the disasters. <laughs> Well, share one of them. What I mean, seven years has gone by, so no one can get arrested now. So go ahead and share one. Well, you know, like the like the old the wharf story where the cops came in. That one. There's ones. There, oh, there was a few bad ones. <laughs> Remember that? <laughs> Remember the one we were playing in Waldorf? I don't know what was wrong with me. Sometimes I would do stupid stuff. Some guy came up to the van. We were getting ready to leave. We were sort of standing around and he just reached in there. You, you guys had your case of Heineken in there. He just reached in and grabbed one and took it. And I, and I think you and Donnie were standing out there uh, and you were like, hey, that's not yours. <laughs> and the guy just walked off and I picked up a big chunk of cinder block. Like he was way down the walkway and I just flung it in the air, like up in the air in an arc. Came down. I, luckily, it didn't hit him in the head. <laughs> it hit him in the back, like square in the back. And he's like, "Oh!" And I think he dropped the beer. And, and that, then at that point, Ron, uh, Donnie took off after him. Like, <laughs> him all around the club and across the parking lot. And we had to jump in the van and go try to catch him. It was like there was so many. Did you get your beer back? Did you get the beer back? No, I think the guy just dropped it on the ground and ran. <laughs> Well, how about that? Somebody stole Donnie's jacket out of the oh, van, yeah. and we we all were going down there like 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 a bunch of a gang guys, like we're going to do it. a bunch of hundred and twenty pound guys right, going to right. do the damage on anybody, and we were all badasses. Thank God we didn't find it because they would have killed us. <laughs> I know, I know. So many of those nights like that, just crazy, and with the fireworks and uh, setting dumpsters on fire. Yeah, we don't have too many decadent stories. I mean, we had we had our fun with with you know girls in, in the dressing rooms and and hotel rooms, but nothing nothing out of the ordinary. It, it was the same old shit. So, but yeah. Brian used to set he used to set medians on fire with fireworks. That was fun. He would set dumpsters on fire, not intentionally, but it it was. Um, or I do. I, I was really passive aggressive on the road. Like I go into we'd have you know we'd be back at the hotel and some fan would have a party in his room so we'd go there and i just secretly just trash the guy's room like not obviously 
like I was just telling a story the other night. Somebody had a big cooler full of ice and water and beer. And before I left, I took the phone book and threw it in there. And this is back when they had the big fat phone books. I just threw it in the cooler, put the lid back on, and it just soaked it up. And I just left and went back to my room and just cracked up about it. <laughs> but that is, you just, you just triggered it, you, Brian. You're a little bit sinister. Yeah. Yeah. I love causing trouble and then leaving and then just laughing about it. <laughs> you know, you just triggered an old memory. I remember we were staying, my buddies, we were staying at uh, Virginia Beach and we were staying at this cheap motel because that's all we had the money for. It was, it was beach week. And this is back in the days. And so people who are watching this, you guys don't remember what a pay phone is. It was a pay phone sitting right outside of the sidewalk. There was no cell phones. There was a pay phone booth. And so there was these guys at the hotel, I mean, in the room, two rooms down, and they were just, I don't know why, why we we're like you, Brian, we just had, we were like, we're going to get these guys. So we started calling the pay phone from our hotel phone and waited when some of the stores were walking out of the sidewalk. And finally, someone answered the phone and we said, oh, thank God. Hey, can you go get my brother? He's at room 102 and, and tell him that, and, and tell him that Brian wants to, uh, brian brian needs to see him his brother brian's on the phone and uh they go yeah hold on a second and they go knock on that guy's door and he answered they go hey your brother brian's on the phone he's like, i don't have no brother brian and he slammed the door and they come down they go he says he doesn't uh have a brother named brian said now that's him he does that all the time you go back there and tell him this is serious i need to talk to him and they went back and knocked on the door again the guy goes hey man your brother says you're fooling with him get on the phone and talk to him the guy goes look i don't have any brother now leave me alone and he slams the door again we did it one more time and the guy came out and said i'm gonna punch you in the face if you knock on my door one more time and we're two rooms over looking at the whole thing from our pay-per-view motel window so yeah, that's an old memory that I thought I had forgotten, but uh, you brought it back, Brian. <laughs> yeah, well, there's plenty of those. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, Steve, you're yep. known for your high energy. Where do you think that comes from? What do you draw that upon? What what causes you just to be who you are, who Steve Whiteman is? When I first started being a front man, I went from the drums, which I was very comfortable being a drummer, lead singer. And when they threw me out front, I was like, okay, now I'm a turd. I don't know what the hell to do. <laughs> and it took me, it took me a little while to kind of figure it out. And I think the, the one night that I, I finally got it was we played this, this club in Leonardtown, Maryland. And it was like six nights a week, five sets a night. And Tuesdays and Wednesdays, nobody was there. So we would just fuck off. We would just have fun and, and just, use our sense of humor to entertain ourselves. And that's when I realized that this is what I need to do as a front man. And then I saw the Stones in 1981 and I saw Mick Jagger and I said, ah, that's how you do it. So I, I, I stole a lot of Mick shit. I used my sense of humor and I've been using it ever since. Was that at RFK back in 81? Ah. Uh, where was it, Brian? You remember that? Remember we went there with the with the Atlantic rep? Might have been, might have been. Um, no, it, I want to say I was at that. Con I want to say it was R. I want to say I went to one of them, and I thought it was RFK, but I I could be wrong. It could have been the Cap Center, but I thought it was RFK. Well, I don't remember where it was. I remember they opened up with uh, tumbling dice, and Nick came rolling out, and he was wearing that football uniform, the football pants, and the you know. That was uh, that was Capital Center. Capital Center okay. was. Okay. You can see him at RFK later on um, Steel Wheels. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe that's the one I saw. Maybe that's the one that I attended. But Mick's been a big inspiration for me because I just love the constant energy, the constant motion. People that just stand there bore me. So I don't want to be, I don't want to, I don't want to bore people. So I give it all I got every time I'm out there. Hey, remember, no. that, remember we went to see, uh, we were playing coast to coast. We went down to, we had a, like a day to kill and we went and watched uh, Let's Spend the Night Together at that theater. Oh, yeah. You know, that was like one of our best shows ever. I yeah, think. yeah. Just be inspired by the Stones. Yeah, yeah. I remember going up to the ticket bureau, let's spend the night together. And she goes, what? <laughs> <laughs> I remember, I was not going to ask you, I was going to remember a memory. I remember, I don't know if you remember this, Steve or Brian, but it was at the, uh, this is probably in the early 80s. 
And I'll never forget this moment because Steve, you were genuinely sorry. It was at the Bayou. Somebody had a nice Nikon camera and you, you picked it up and you were like holding it up and going, oh, man, this is a really nice camera. And you were taking pictures from the stage, but you dropped it and you broke it. Do you remember? Oh, oh. And you, you that dropped it. Me. You, that wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> but no, but you genuinely, all of a sudden your face changed, your demeanor changed. You could tell you were really bad. You're like, uh, yeah, here, here. I'm so, I'm sorry, but that's a really good one there. And you just like hurry up and hand it to her and say, I hope you can put it back together. But uh, I never forget that because you're you. It was a really good moment. Then you dropped it and it literally did break. And you're like, I can tell in your face, you're like, oh crap! I hope she's not gonna make me pay for this thing. Oh shit! I don't <laughs> I don't remember that, but I'll take your word for it. Yeah, and then the other the other the other memory I have of you is. I think it was in Raleigh, North Carolina, you had the flu and they had given you a shot. Seriously. So you were sore. You, you said, I can't jump on the balloons. I can't even. So you grabbed somebody else to jump on the balloons that night. Cause you said, I, sorry, I, I need somebody else. Cause I, you remember that one? That was in Raleigh. I forget well, where it, it was. The it, was flu. Yeah, it, <laughs> it was the flu. <laughs> hey, listen, but it, it, hey, listen, we're going to keep it the flu, but no, uh, you, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what it was. I don't give a shit. Um, <laughs> I woke Brian up early that morning. I had a thrombosis. I had a fucking hemorrhoid the size of a golf ball. <laughs> and, and Brian took me to a, to a surgeon to get lanced. So they relieved all the pressure and I had to play that night. And, you know, you got to play. So I was, I was pretty much wearing a, 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 a diaper just to catch all the <laughs> blood while we were playing. And yeah, there were certain things I couldn't do, but had to have show show must go on yeah I'll, I'll never forget that that was that was that was good and then back and then back in the old days i don't I, kudos to you because doing uh don't tell me no tell me yeah 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 the number of stories that you told that just totally went all over the place from being in jail and 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 bubba was was hilarious <laughs> And uh, I sure hope Bubba never got a hold of you for real. But if he did, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just you're here now, Bubba. so you survived. I don't remember Bubba. What, what, was Bubba, <laughs> what Bubba have to do with it? You said you got in jail. You guys got in trouble. You went to jail, and there was this guy that, in the cell with you named Bubba. And <laughs> Bubba was coming after you, and you you're like, don't. He said, don't tell me no. Tell me yeah, yeah, yeah. And really? that's where I, don't, you, I don't remember that. Was, I thought I was pretty much stuck to the record after after that came out no this was this was probably it yeah, might have been was, in ham it might have been in hammer it was it was hammer jacks or the bayou or uh what's another place you guys played it it might have been in shiley it was one of those three places i don't know yeah. exactly when i just remember the story and i just remember we were just laughing i, mean, I, I did i did elaborate I always elaborated and made it it got so damn long after a while the guys in the band were falling asleep by the time i got done with it so <laughs> I thought it's it's time to cut it back to the to the real record version. And you yeah. know what? Honestly, we're so sick to death of doing that song. Oh, I know. It's it's just, you, you give it's the fans. Cool. I see you you, you 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 give. I mean, you've had to do it because it's been a staple on the yeah. balloons. You've kept along. I, and I know there's are two tables, but I I say, man, at some point they're gonna have to give that song up. And then you sort of went into the point at the end. Hey, we're gonna do one of these songs. Which one is it? Blow my fuse yeah. or? Yeah, 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 yeah. And they would still choose yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but we didn't care. We go, no, fuck you. We ain't doing it. <laughs> well, now we're going to lose Brian on this next segment because we're going to talk sports for a second. So, all right. <laughs> so, how do you think the uh, West Virginia Mountaineers are going to do in football this, this this year? And how do you think the Washington football team is going to do this? I'd this say year? West Virginia is going to do the same they've done the past 20 years, <laughs> not much. <laughs> they're 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 to me they're fun to watch but they're chokers when they get up with a big game and something could actually catapult them to to another level they choke and they lose that's just so typical of of what they do um and also i i don't think the big 10 is going to be around very much longer because of all this college shit that's going on right now yeah the sec is starting to bring in all these other big teams so it, it's going to shake up college football altogether yeah, I, 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 I really, when they started to mess with the ACC and, and start changing things around, it became yeah. such a, uh, a money, a money pool. 
I kind of kind of lost it. I mean, I still follow sports because that's just who I am. It's in my DNA, but I've kind of lost the integrity of it when they've started moving stuff around Maryland, yeah. Notre Dame, North Carolina, all of them. Yeah. I, so, I hate when Maryland left the ACC. Yeah, me too. That was such a great, just great rivals. And, and you know, I, I thought that sucked. And I still watch them, but I, I'm not as enthusiastic as I used to be about it. I used to love watching Maryland, North Carolina, Maryland, Virginia. It, that was Maryland, a great rivalry. Duke. Yeah, there, there's a Duke. big rivalries. I mean, it's terrible. What do you? Th- I'm excited about the Fred Washington football team. I can't stand saying that, but I'll say. I know. It. I actually don't mind that. I think it's pretty clever. I hope they hang on to it because it just—it's kind of like kicking it back in the faces of everybody that wanted to change the name. You know what I mean? Since yeah, instead no, of coming I, up with another nickname, they just say, "Okay, we're the Washington Football Team." If you don't like it, who get? Who cares? I, I think it's kind of like you know, f- fuck you, everybody. Right. Um, and I don't know. They they need a quarterback. I don't think Fitz, Fitzpatrick's going to be the the man for them. They they've got a good defense. I think they still need a couple couple things on offense. But I don't have high expectations for them. But hell, they won the division last year at what seven and nine. Yeah, I mean so, we were the, we were the best of the worst, is what I yeah, say. Yeah, and that whole division is not going to be a whole lot better. So actually, I've become more of a Ravens fan. After ah. going through so many bad years with the Redskins, I just I like watching good football and <laughs> the Ravens play good football. Now, do you go? Do you go some of the? You catch some of the games? I do. The, yeah, and I, I love going to. I love going to the Ravens Stadium. The Redskins Stadium's a joke. I mean, it's yes. so far out of the way. You got to take buses to get in. It's it's stupid. I love the old RFK where you took the subway in, you walked off and walked to the stadium. That was perfect. Yeah, that FedEx fiasco to, to I mean, I had season tickets for, for a number of years, but to uh, to get there, it's just not worth it. I finally just no. gave up. It's uh, The only reason I did it for three years is because we had a bus out of a bar called uh, Addie's in Manassas, and they would drive you there right to the stadium, and they would serve you drinks and food the whole way there, and then you had drinks and food the whole way back. So that made it easy. I had to that think works. about it. It yeah, does. Yeah, works. absolutely. It works. But the problem is, you know, you're really spending the whole day, and you're just catching one game. I'd right. much rather watch it on my, my big screen at home and, yeah. and watch all the games. Yep, exactly. I, I'm, I'm there with you. I've, I haven't been to a game in probably six years. I've never been to one. <laughs> I, was, I was waiting for you to say that, Brian. <laughs> We're going to get Brian to a game, Steve. No, one, you're one not. Time. No, I know. No, you're not. I know when he flies on Super Bowl Sunday and is commenting that these people are watching some kind of sport yeah. game on TV. <laughs> <laughs> now the only way you'll get me to a game is if we're playing halftime. There you go. There we go. Oh, maybe we start a petition and make that happen. Maybe you guys can be the Super Bowl halftime. Uh, yeah, that ain't gonna happen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, Steve, let's talk about your uh, your your apparel that you wear on stage. You wear bowling shoes most of the time because. <laughs> So the question is, were you a bowler at some point in your I'm life, or are you bowler. still a bowler? No, I've never bowled. I'm not a bowler. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 think, I think somebody gave me a pair of bowling shoes a long time ago, and when I got on stage with them, they had a slippery bottom, and it allowed me to do some shuffling and just have more moves on stage, and I like that. So. That's the only reason I wear the bowling shoes. It's just so I can I can shuffle around more. When you're on carpet, you can't really boogie very well. But when you have bowling shoes on with that slippery bottom, I can shuffle all over the place. So that's that's the biggest reason I wear them. Awesome. Brian, you were going to say something? Oh, I was just going to say you can do all those James Brown moves. There you go. <laughs> yep. Did you ever play sports back in high school, Steve? I know you love sports. Did you play in high school? I, I know because I was always in bands. I've been in bands since I was like 13 years old. So that was my priority. And I couldn't, I couldn't do that and do sports too. I, I played pickup sports with friends and things like that, but never anything organized. All right, Brian, I've seen you glazing over over there. So let's get you back engaged. So, so Steve, you have a Traeger. You're part of the Traeger crew. What do you cook on the Traeger? Me or Brian? You, Steve. 
I'm not a cook whatsoever. My wife is the chef in the house, but she does amazing ribs. She does uh, uh, turkey breast. She does pork loin. She does uh, the, the beef tenderloin. Um, she does, we do just about everything on the Traeger. It's, it's just an amazing grill. And she, she just got a, 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 a griddle because sometimes because the Traeger doesn't really sear the way you want things seared. Right. She got a, a, a grill to be able to sear things like, like the, the fillets and things like that. And so my wife is the chef. I, I take no credit. Okay. Yeah, Brian, you're, Brian, you're smiling. What are you saying? Oh, that, that is the, the magic combination is having like the, the smoker and then the, the griddle to, to yeah. see it afterwards. Yeah, it's perfect. Yeah, I find I find I use my griddle probably more than my my Traeger because I just there's just so much easier to sear stuff and go back, especially when you get thin cuts. You know, you just boom, boom, you're done. Um, but I mean, I love the, the I love the Traeger. It, Traeger gives it that smoke that gives it that that special flavor, and then you sear it on the griddle, and it's like perfect. Yeah, yeah, it is a good combo. Yeah, if you got both of those, then you're you're in good company. So your wife does most of the the outdoor cooking. So. I just take it that you're just floating around the pool drinking beer while she's cooking your steak for you. Absolutely. Me and friends and beer. <laughs> you just float up to the side with your mouth open. <laughs> and she drops it in. <laughs> what's the, uh, is that, what's, what do you do to unwind, Steve? What do, what do you do well, after you guys do a show and you got a couple days in between your next gig? What do you, what do you do to, what does Steve Whiteman do to relax? I sit at my pool. I love, well, first I get up and I walk about four or five miles every day. And then I work out for about 35, 45 minutes every day. And then I go to my pool and I relax, have a few beers and float. And then in the evenings, I love to watch sports. I watch baseball. I'll watch it. Now I'm watching the Olympics. So, and then and I like, I like good movies too. So I, I'll just settle into a good movie. What's your all-time favorite movie? Give me your top three favorite movies. Let's see what you got. Brian, you oh, too, so you got time to think about them. Oh, God. All-time favorite movie. The Godfather, the first one. Number okay. one. The Jerk, number uh, two. Steve Martin. Yes. Blazing Saddles, number uh, three. <laughs> wow. And, and, and when they come on, if, if it's on commercial television, I can't turn them off. Brian, what are yours? Well, Blazing Saddles. <laughs> 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 and then uh god what else do i have um um i'm 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 god i'm i'm drawing a blank uh god i was just thinking of it when you at when you were talking about it well i'll give you i'll give my i'll give my three so my three okay. are uh probably blues brothers the first <laughs> one that's a good one too stripes mm -hmm. and then probably a few good men Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. There's so many good movies. There are. There are. So but there's many movies. Good movies. You know, there's Goodfellas. There's, Goodfellas is another good fell Yeah, Goodfellas. Well, that was a good one, too. Kind of think of. Yeah, there's Goodfellas. There's Taxi Driver. There's. Uh, and I like that movie Crossroads. Yeah. Yeah. That was good. Corny, but good. Yeah. 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 But I'm a, I'm, got I'm a Ry Cooter fan, so I love the music in that. I'm surprised you didn't put Cheech and Chong on that on that list. What up in smoke? Up in smoke, yeah. I remember seeing that in Ronnie's van at the drive-in. <laughs> <laughs> Is that when you get paid? Did you had to pay by the number of people that was in your vehicle, so everybody covers up under a blanket? And this oh, Ronnie says it's just me. Oh, no, we climbed under his. He had a built-in bed in the back, so we you, you open the back doors, you can crawl under the bed. It was me and, me and Donnie Spence. This was back in the old when Donnie Spence was in the band. <laughs> so, so now let me ask you both the question. What is your favorite kicks album that you guys produce? If you guys could just pick one album that represents, I think I know what Brian's is, but Steve, what's your favorite kicks album that you guys have done? I mean, Blow My Fuse is one that catapulted us to where we felt we should have been all along. And, um, you know, it took us to different countries and got us out of the, the, the van and into a tour bus and into arenas. So I'd have to say that that's, that's the one, but musically, I, I still favor Midnight Dynamite. I just, I, I love every song on that record, except for Cry Baby. <laughs> <laughs> and, 
and I loved making that record. I thought Bo Hill did an amazing job and, and we had so much fun making that record. The other records after that weren't nearly as much fun because there was so much tension going on all the time. So, but Bo Hill made, uh, made a great record and there was tension at the end of Midnight Dynamite because of the obvious. What about you, Brian? What's your favorite? You got to pick one record that you think that you love. Which one is it? Well, I, I felt the same about the the Blow My Fuse thing, but but then my favorite's on the other side. I thought Hotwire. Hotwire is my favorite musically. Mm. Yeah, I, I I like both of those. I like all your records. Like, I know you guys don't like Cool Kids. I, I guess that's going to be uh, Mark's next <laughs> next remix project for you guys. That's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> You guys can remix it. Anyway, I'd like the remix. Did you like you the can remix? remix it, you, can, you can smash it. You can bury it. We don't give a shit about that record. <laughs> no, do you like the remix of Midnight Dynamite? Do you like what he did on, on the remix? Relit. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, he makes the drums just thunderous and jump off the CD. And the vocals are way out front. There's not so much mush on the guitars. Or, I don't know if you, if you listen to like the original, there's so much echo that sometimes if you have stereo, the echo travels over to the other speaker and it, and it just kind of muddies everything up. And Bo got rid of all that, he just cleaned it up and made it sound crystal clear and thunderous and brought the vocals, all the lead vocals up to where they should have been in the first place and just did a great job. I thought, I thought so as well. And it's funny you said cry baby. I used to look, we used to in the, whenever year the Midnight Dynamite came out, that was just a cassette deck that just played over and over in, in my Monte Carlo SS. The only song I would fast forward by was Cry Baby. <laughs> I, so it's funny you said that. And um, um, that, was a, a, that was the biggest reason there was a blow up between Donnie and Bill Hill was that song. Cause I think Donnie wanted to call it Ball Baby. Mm -hmm. And the record company said, no, we don't want to call it that. So Bo suggested Cry Baby but then insisted on a writing credit. And that's when Donnie blew up and said, wow. nope, I'm not going to do that. And it got, it got, it got ugly at the end of that. Yeah. that All right, everybody. It's that time of the evening where we get a chance to tune in to Mr. Brian Shanker of the Meat Tribe YouTube channel for the meat deals of the week. So Brian, what do you have for us? How's everybody doing tonight? Good. <laughs> <laughs> it's hot. Yeah, yeah, it is hot out there. You guys got me out of my pool for this. I hope you know that. Uh, well, my part's not going to keep you too long. It's going to be talking with those guys. So um, one, of, one of the Keto Rocks family members, I don't know if she's been a guest yet, but Linda, Linda asked me to look into Carms Supermarket. That's up in uh, Central PA. So the first deal that I'm going to talk about is from that store. It's, uh, they've got some choice grade boneless whole boneless New York strips for $8.99 a pound. Now, it looks like from the picture, they are giving you the whole cut of meat that New York strip steaks come from, and then you, you would just trim them down yourself to the thickness that you want. And that deal runs through August 2nd. Uh, next up, I've got a couple of deals from Food Lion. The first one is a choice grade boneless ribeye steak. And again, um, Food Lion, tells you to ask them to cut it to your preferred thickness. That deal is $8.99 a pound, and that runs through the 3rd of August. And we've got a couple of deals at Harris Teeter I'm going to tell you about. The first one is a choice grade boneless ribeye steak or roast, and that is at uh, $9.99 a pound. Regular price is $17.99, so that's $8 per pound savings. Oh, wow. Hey, Brian, I think we're going to buy our, our, our ribeyes this week for uh, for next weekend. Okay. At Harris Teeter? You know? At Harris Teeter, yes. Awesome. I, I actually, I forgot a deal. Um, Food Lion, um, they have 25% all of their Nature's Promise meat and seafood. So if you've got a Food Lion near you, the Nature's Promise meat and seafood is 25% off. And back to Harris Teeter. Now, Harris Teeter's got several deals. Um, I'm just telling you about two of them. They've got, if you're going to be cooking some, uh, if you need any ground beef, they've got some USDA prime ground beef at $2.99 a pound, $4 off their regular price. So if you're headed to Harris Teeter, Jim, you're going to have a lot of, uh, lot of things to choose from for the, for the summit. 
when did that when did that sell in brian the the harris teeter sales end on the third of august okay and then uh so next up we've got a deal at kroger brian's got a kroger down near him they've got some choice grade boneless new york strip steaks a family pack at 12.99 a pound Kroger seems to be a little bit more expensive than uh, some of the stores that I'm reporting on, but you can still get still get something good there. That's where and, the rich people shop. <laughs> and then the last deal I'm going to talk about is at uh, Giant Eagle. They've got some 80% lean ground beef for $2.99 a pound. Awesome. So, you guys, uh, Brian, Brian and Jim, you guys have been texting with me back and forth about my uh, my chuck roast disaster that I had. <laughs> I, I made some shoe leather. <laughs> <laughs> I think I know where I went wrong, and it was I didn't put any additional moisture in there in texting with Brian. I didn't have it sitting in any beef broth or anything like that. So what do you do when you screw up a piece of meat like that? I made chili. And the, and the chili actually came out really, really good. Well, there so, you go. You just got to you just got to repeat that mistake to make good chili. That's all. Right. But so what I did was I went back out oh, too close, got another one. So we're going to try to do a redo on this and hopefully I won't mess it up. I got this one at Weiss. It was five ninety nine a pound when I bought it. They only had uh, these little tiny chuck roasts in there. Uh, they were like all under two pounds. So I asked the butcher there, I said, can you cut me one about three pounds? So he gave me one just a little over three and a half pounds. So I don't know if you can tell the thickness on this one. Nice. Like, yeah, yeah, very nice. Choice grade. So, so Steve, I have to ask, you're, uh, you're on the Meat Tribe segment here. What's your favorite cut of beef that you like? What do you like to eat? I love, I love filet mignon. That's that, filet. That, that's my go-to. That's about the only kind of steak that I'll order at a restaurant because it's, okay. it's it's fat-free, it's gristle-free, and it's delicious. That's well, see, I, Brian I, and Jim and I, we love the ribeye with all the fat in it. <laughs> yeah, I know you guys love fat. I hate fat. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can't go wrong with the filet mignon. That's that's good. Do you grill a lot yourself, or is that you just get it when you go out to restaurants? No, my wife grills all the time. We we okay. usually get we usually get the 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 roast and do the whole roast and then you know cut them up and have a bunch of friends over and they're usually great. Nice, nice, yeah. awesome. Well, good to hear. So that's all I got for you guys this week. All right. Well, thanks for uh, thanks for giving us the meat deals of the week, and we will see you next Friday, Brian. <laughs> meat deals. <All> right. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you go over to the Meat Tribe channel on Utah on YouTube and uh, subscribe to the channel, like the videos, and click on the bell so you get notified anytime I upload a new video. And if you come across any deals, put it in the comment section below. See you guys. All right. We'll see you. See you, Brian. Have a good one. Well, anyway, I'm not going to keep you. You still got your pool waiting for I you. Do. I do. And, I hear it. It's coming. <laughs> it's I'm coming. Kinda... <laughs> All right. Brian, if someone was watching this for the first time, what bit of advice would you give them? I would say eat your meat. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. All right, everybody. Well, Steve, thanks for coming on the show. I'll see you guys Saturday night at the Beacon in Richmond. I'll actually okay. be at that show. So, so I'll see you guys there. You guys have a now. You guys are playing Friday night at the State and, Theater. Yeah. Awesome. Well, you guys have a great show. Thanks for coming on, Steve, and uh, everybody out there. Stay safe, stay well, and stay out of, out of that hospital. Get a vaccine, God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> and we'll see you guys soon. Take care, everybody. Good Bye. to see you, Steve.